Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Three things are not clear in this country, politically speaking. Number one, 2022 general election is going to be a two-horse race between Raila Amolo Odinga and the Deputy President Dr. William Samuel Ruto. A third force is not going to emerge. I know Musalem Davadi is going to run for the presidency. He's going to be on the ballot. But Musalem Davadi is not going to be a third force in this country, politically speaking. So that's very clear now. The second thing which is also very clear is that William Samai Ruto is determined to become the next president of the Republic of Kenya. And I don't know what he will do if he will not be declared the next president of the Republic of Kenya. As a matter of fact, the deputy president is doing everything possible to ensure that 2022 is going to be the next president. The reason why he's doing that probably is known to himself and to Kenyans, but he's keen and he's doing everything to become the next president. That's also very clear. The third thing which is also very clear now is that President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta is going to do everything to block William Samai Ruto from the presidency in 2022. When I first indicated that the president was going to betray his deputy, just like they were normally accused here, so many people thought that I was sowing seeds of discord between the president and the deputy president. But from all indications, President Ru Kenyatta is going to support Raila Amolodinga. And one thing which you have to agree is that Raila Odinga has always contested for the presidency severely, but from as an outsider, this time around, he has that support from the president. So that's also something which is clear. But William Ruto is determined. So in this video, I want us to look at the secrets which William Samai Ruto is currently employing, politically speaking, to ensure that in 2022, he's going to defeat his opponent, who is Raila Amolo Odinga. But before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to thank you for your continued support. Now, let us get back to the main issue. 2022 general election is taking shape. William Ruto is doing everything possible to be declared the president. But will President Ruto Kenyatta allow the deputy president to be declared the next president of the Republic of Kenya? You all understand that because of the fallout between the deputy president and President Ruto Kenyatta, there's a lot of bad bloods between them. Should the deputy president be declared the next president of the Republic of Kenya? How will people like, Kima, like uh, Karanja Kibicho, Fred Matiangi and the rest operate? That's the biggest question and that's why I always maintain that those guys are not going to allow the deputy president to become the next president of the Republic of Kenya. William Ruto has campaigned for four good years. No politician in this country has ever done that. Even Raila Molodinga, who is known to be a campaigner, has been campaigning. But Raila Odinga has never managed, has never managed to campaign for four good years. Currently, for those who've been following his politics, Raila Odinga has just begun his campaigns. But William Ruto has sustained that. Why? Because he wants to be declared the next president of the Republic of Kenya. But what strategies is the deputy president using? The deputy president is using these four strategies to ensure that in 2022, he's going to lock out Raila Odinga. The first strategy is the court. William Samoy Ruto understands so well that there's bad blood between the judiciary and the executive. So what the deputy president has done is that he's been aiding the fight against, or the, he's been aiding the judiciary in fighting the system. And if you've been looking, or if you've been following the rulings which has been made in this country in the recent past, there is no way, for example, some rulings could have been made if the judiciary and the system were working together. So the deputy president is banking on the deep state, I mean, on the judiciary, to help him. For example, there are certain rulings as we head towards 2022 which are going to be critical. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the IBC. 
IBC as currently constituted has a chairperson. That chairperson is called Wafula Chebukati. Wafula Chebukati is a stooge of the deputy president Dr. William Ruto. And because Wafula Chebukati has bones to chew with Raila Modo Dinga, he's also working to stop Raila Modo Dinga. As a matter of fact, if you followed some events last week, there was a ruling which Chebukati issued that state state officers like cabinet secretaries are not supposed to play politics. When ODM went to lodge the complaint in the last election, it was a full Chebukati and the judiciary who ruled that cabinet secretaries are exempted from that rule, which means Matiangi, Kibicho and the rest are free to play politics. So Wafula Chibukat is also banking on the on the IBC. But the fact is, as we speak today, the system and the deep and the deep state are taking over the running of the affairs of IBC. Whether they'll man, they'll manage to outweigh uh, Wafula Chibukati is something we still don't know. The third strategy the DP is using is to consolidate his stronghold, which basically means the former Jubilee strongholds. When the elections were conducted in the last election, what happened was that Jubilee government were declared the winners. But Jubilee as a political party had support from two regions. That is Central Kenya and Rift Valley. Rift Valley is safe because their son is running. But Central is not safe because the president is supporting someone else. So in the in the past few days, if you've been following the deputy president, and someone pointed out that the deputy president goes to a place like he was in Nyanza. After completing Nyanza, he went to, to Central. He went to Machakos, then today, I mean, he went to Ukambani, then again today, the deputy president is in Western. It's like the deputy president goes to Western, Western, Central, 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 West, I mean, Rift Valley, Central, Central, Central. So he's just doing that to try and consolidate those support. And once those supports are consolidated, then he can then go and compete with Raila Mono Dinga in Raila Dinga's strongholds of Western, Nyanza, and maybe the coastal region. And that's why Raila Dinga has embarked on a, a three-day tour of the coastal region, which I'm going to analyze tomorrow. And he's hoping to try and undo what the deputy president, against the deputy president, might have, have, have gained there. So that's number three, consolidating Jubilee stronghold. Which, by the way, if you ask me, the deputy president has so far managed to hold on to Central Kenya. He has managed to hold on to Rift Valley despite sustained efforts from the deep state. Number four, the deputy president is also trying to do one thing. Trying to water down Raila Odinga's reform credentials. How do you water down Raila Odinga's reform credentials? One of the opportunities he had was the use of, I, of BBI. So when BBI was not very popular with so many people, and he used it so well to water down Raila Odinga reforms credential. And he's also been using personalized attacks, personal attacks against Raila Mono Dinga to try so hard to ensure that Raila Odinga doesn't appear as someone who is good. If I ask you today, in 2007, Raila Odinga stood on change. In 2017, change. 2013, almost the same. But the moment he joined the government, there are so many things which Raila Odinga could not have allowed to happen when he was outside government. And because now he's part of government, his reforms credential has been dented seriously. And the deputy president is banking on that dented image to achieve several things. One of the things he's doing, in my view, is to win over the support of the civil society. Once you have the support of the civil society, then it means nobody can question any other things because Ruto doesn't have any reform credentials. So Raila Dinga was going to, to question his reform credential, but because Raila Dinga is now dented, there's no way Raila, uh, Ruto can be asked. The, only, the other group which could have asked him is the civil society, which is now, is now working so hard. The other is church. And in one of the videos I did, uh, I think two years ago, I gave an explanation on William Ruto's game plan with the church. The church used to be the voice of the voiceless. The church used to talk about vices like corruption. William Ruto has them. 
so today the church cannot speak against some of those things so because of that he's, he's targeting Raila Odinga's reform credential number five or is it number six number five is the use of money William Ruto is using money money to buy support in this country and not just using in fact 2022 general election is going to be the most expensive election in this country not because of any other thing because of money for example when Ruto was in uh, Kisumu one sitting he gave 4.5 million that one you leave alone the other expenses of mobile of uh, the logistics like if 50 people are coming you know things like those so the fact is he's using money Raila Odinga is not known to use money and Ruto is using money strategically to show Kenyans that as much as he's being accused of being corrupt he's sharing that corrupt money with the public and number 6 he's also trying so hard to appear as a government outsider because of jubilee failures there are people who are not happy with jubilee government because jubilee has failed so he's making himself appear as a jubilee as, a, as an outsider and also as, as an outsider he's also trying to to win the sympathy and whenever he can the deputy president is also milking the success of jubilee government so he's also using that strategy of an outsider in the hope of winning the support of those who who are not comfortable with the performance of jubilee so far and lastly tagging Raila Morodinga as a government project. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you think this is the first time Raila Odinga is running for the presidency? No. Raila Odinga has contested for the presidency before. Three times, four times. So this is going to be his fifth time. So you can't say that Raila Odinga is a government project. But William Ruto is successfully tagging Raila Amon Odinga as a government project. And there are people who are not comfortable with a failed government like Jubilee trying to create another government through Raila Amolo Odinga. I don't know what you what you think, but do you think those strategies William Ruto is using he will be he will be able to succeed with them ahead of 2022 general election. Let me hear your thoughts. I'm actually in Katito in somewhere in Nyakach. Just uh, took off briefly to do for you this video and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Bye bye.